uniform motion on a position versus time graph is always represented by a straight line. And if we wish to calculate the velocity, the magnitude of the velocity represented by that line, we need to calculate the slope of the line, the rise over the run. Now as you know, any time you calculate the slope of a line, you need to choose two points on that line. It doesn't matter which two points you choose, but you must choose two points. In this case, I choose those two there. For this example, the rise is going to be 100 minus 40 centimeters, or 60 centimeters, and the run would be 25 minus 10 seconds, or 15 seconds. If I take that rise of 60 centimeters and divide it by the run of 15 seconds, I get a slope of 4 centimeters per second. What interpretation can I give to that slope? What does the number 4 centimeters per second tell me about the object represented in this graph? To answer this question, I'm going to look at an analogous situation that appears very different. Suppose you were to just collect circular objects, anything you find that is circular, and for each object you measure its radius and its circumference. Just bottle caps, dinner plates, silver dollars, pizza, whatever you find. If you were to plot all of those data points on a graph where the vertical axis was circumference and the horizontal axis was radius, you would find that all of your circular objects appeared as dots on a single straight line. Further, you would find that the slope of that straight line is 2 pi, about 6.28. The question is, what interpretation can we give that slope of 6.28? What does the number 6.28 tell us about circles? To answer that question, we're going to do a thought experiment. Suppose that you were to go down to the local hardware store and buy a lot of rope, red rope, and then you were to tie that rope snugly around the earth. Now for the sake of simplicity, let's suppose that the earth is perfectly spherical and that all the seas for some reason are frozen over so that our rope doesn't get all wet and, and soggy. Now suppose that you go back to that hardware store and buy just 20 feet of extra rope and take that 20 feet and splice it into the rope. Now all of us, every human on the planet is going to stand shoulder to shoulder and we're going to bend over and pick up that rope at the same time the same amount so that everywhere around the planet it comes up off the ground by the same amount. The question is what is the largest thing that could fit under that rope? Would it be an amoeba? A bumblebee? A cat? Or a dinosaur? I'll give you a moment to think about that, and then I want you to commit to an answer. If you chose a dinosaur, you're correct. Now I know what many of you are thinking. You're thinking 20 feet of rope is negligible compared to the distance around the entire Earth. It can't possibly be a dinosaur. It has to be an amoeba. Well, let's go back to that straight line graph which represented all round objects. And let's interpret that slope of 6.28. What that means is that in order to go one unit to the right on the horizontal axis. I have to go 6.28 units up on the vertical axis. What that means is that if I want the radius of my circle to increase by one foot, I'm going to have to add only 6.28 feet of rope. We added 20 feet of rope, which is about three times 6.28. So when all of us all around the planet lean over and pull up this rope, it's going to go up above the ground about three feet. And that's enough room for a dinosaur to get under. No, I'm not talking about a Tyrannosaurus Rex. No, I'm talking about the little guy that, that got the fellow in the Jeep. You saw the movie. Let's go back and interpret this slope 
of 4 centimeters per second. What this tells us about the object represented by this straight line graph is that for every one second, every one unit of the horizontal axis, this object got four centimeters further down the road. That's the interpretation of the slope. In many situations in science, there is great physical insight to be gained by interpreting the slope of a straight line graph of data.